Hey everyone, just as a quick reminder for those of you who may not have heard, I have joined The Chilling Family, where I'll be providing hours of spine-tingling content and narrations exclusively on the app, and I want to make sure you take advantage of the free trial if you haven't yet. Chilling is the new home of horror and an amazing mobile app that allows you to do things that are just not possible on YouTube, with hundreds of unique and amazing stories that are sorted into curated playlists, or you can create your own. We give you so much flexibility to listen the way you want. This includes a chilling exclusive feature, our ambient menu. Change the background noise of the story at will to fit your mood. From rainstorms to crackling fires, it's an absolute game changer. Of course, this is offered completely and totally ad-free. That's right, no ads, just hours and hours of uninterrupted, horrifying, creepy, and all-around spooky content. And we're just getting started. Not only are we adding hours of new content every week, but we're soon going to expand in the classic novels and audio series. Original video content is also in the works, and we feel we're really building something special here. I couldn't be more excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this journey, and I hope you can join us. Download Chilling now and start your free trial today. Then keep the scares rolling with hours of continually expanded and exclusive content at your fingertips, ad-free, for $2.99 a month. Click the link in the description below or simply search Chilling in the App Store. Also, Chilling is giving away a PS5 bundle. This giveaway is pretty simple. Three easy steps to enter. 1. Download Chilling and start the free trial. 2. Follow on Twitter and tag friends on the pinned post. Every tag is another chance to win. And 3. Complete a two-question form linked down below. Good luck to all who participate and enjoy the show. My mom worked at Walmart, and she was being harassed by an employee. Guy was your typical idiot who offered my mom to quote-unquote whoop my brother and I and kick us out when he learned she was widowed and my brothers and I were struggling to find work. This probably would have already been a bad gamble on his end since my older and brother and I worked in the woods frequently and did lots of heavy moving for people. He would often make comments that creep my mom out. I told her to report him to her boss, to labor in industries, and to the police. One night my mom let me borrow her truck and I dropped her off and went to pick her up later. We were going to arrange day with my friends and teach a friend of mine's fiancé gun safety and how to shoot. I'm also a licensed concealed carrier. I rarely carry other than hunting or going to the range. I pull up to pick my mom up and I see the dude she was talking about. He was smoking and looked at us as he stood. My mom then handed me money and told me to grab a few things. I threw my jacket on to cover up my holster and walked in. I noticed he immediately followed me around, glaring at me and snarling, like as if he was about to fight and every section of the store he was there, so I just decided to move through a few others. I talked to a young female associate, just some nonsense with her to catch his reaction. He was clinching something and staring. The associate felt uncomfortable as she kept looking at him. I moved and he followed until I cut off to the checkout. I got my things and left and as soon as I got back my mom unlocked the door. Meanwhile, I was burning up as my jacket of choice was my heavy car heart, so I was unzipping it and my mom looked worried as I heard footsteps coming. I turned to see him aggressively walking at me, but then he sees the holster and he stops. Excuse me, can I help you with something? I inquire, kind of forgetting I got my holster on still. He zips over to this rusty truck and gets in and waits. My mom is very scared. I see a cigarette light up and he's still just sitting there waiting. My mom immediately tells me, go to the passenger side. I sit down and pull my phone out and I'm ready to call the police. My mom starts driving. He immediately cuts us off and drives off down the road. We see his truck sitting on the side of the highway as we drove by, like he was just waiting there. My mom immediately floored it and had me pump gas for her when we got to the station. I left my gun in there for her as she locked the doors. Unbeknownst to my mom, I called the night manager and told her about the aggressive, threatening employee. He was shocked and 
I made it clear that if I see that employee again, or if I'm followed or harassed, I'm suing the store and its management for allowing dangerous behavior in their store by employees. And apparently this was the final straw since Walmart managers let employee-on-employee -employee harassment slide, but if it's employee-on-customer harassment, the employee is immediately dropped. I got back in the pickup and my mom drove until we got home. The next morning I filed a follow-up complaint on this guy to the staff and they said, He's fired and banned from the property and threatened legal charges. My mom came back and seemed even happier. She informed me that the creep had been fired. Apparently this had been an ongoing thing for him. I don't even have the full context to the degree at which he had been harassing other employees. But the fact that he tried to follow my mother and me on the highway and only stopped whenever he saw that I had a firearm... It just truly makes you wonder, what did he have planned? I spent the first 10 years of my life in the city of San Jose, California. When my mother could afford it, she would take me to a theme park in the neighboring town of Sunnyvale called Great America. We went there about uh, once or twice a year. The rides were fun. The food was good, and I wasn't paying, so I had a good time whenever we went. Except once, at around age seven. About an hour or two into the day, I got that feeling. You know the one. When you get that sneaking suspicion that someone you can't see is watching your every move. I mentioned it to my mom, and she said I was imagining things. We went on about our day, and it was fun, as usual, but I couldn't shake that feeling. All day it got steadily worse, until I was literally begging my mom to take me home. Eventually she obliged, but couldn't figure out what had gotten into me. Now a little backstory, my parents got divorced when I was only a baby. When I was about 11, they reconnected and decided to get back together, and so we moved into this stupid little town up north called Eureka. My dad's dad, I refused to refer to him as my grandfather, lived in the same town and never talked to anyone not even my dad. He was, in every sense of the word, a recluse. He passed away not long after we moved there, and my dad, being his next of kin, was tasked with going through his things. The first word that came to mind when we entered the house was paranoid. There was at least one rifle in every room of the house, sometimes two or three. There was a Colt 45 under his pillow, another under the driver's seat of his car, and a snub-nosed 38 in a Ziploc bag in the back pot of the toilet. Cameras were mounted on every exterior wall, and boxes upon boxes of VHS tapes with the collected recordings from these cameras, some of which were nearly worn out from repeated viewing. Suddenly, from the master bedroom, I hear my mom yell, What the fuck? My mom rarely swore in front of me, so I knew something was seriously wrong. I ran to the bedroom, and what I saw in my mom's hand shocked me to the core. It was a photo of me and my mother at the theme park. I was around seven, walking along with a corn dog in one hand, drink in the other, and I had a suspicious look on my face. I instantly remembered that day. My mother said that she felt faint and left the room. As it turned out, there were around 30 pictures of us from that day, as well as some from other times and places, some of them taken from within arm's reach. I'd never felt more creeped out in my life and haven't since. I don't know why he was spying on us. I'm not sure. I want to. For starters, this was exactly a week ago. I was staying at a hotel for a couple of days due to personal problems. This particular day, me and one of my close friends decided to hang out after he gets out of work that night, which was about 10pm. The distance from his house to the hotel I was staying at was no more than a 5 minute walk. Literally walk 2 blocks down 2 houses on the right and voila, you're there. That's very important for later on. So 10pm came and he tells me to come over and I walk there and go to his house. We smoke some blunts and hit some wax off the bong. We played some video games, listened to some music, and smoked the night away. Once 1.30am hit, 
I told him I should get going since I had business to handle later that morning. He was clearly understanding about it and offered to walk me about halfway. I declined the offer since it was only a five minute walk. He walked me to his backyard gate and from there he opened the gate and we said our goodbyes and I started heading home. For more context, this area isn't so bad but it also isn't good. Basically the borderline of the bad and good side of my city. Plus, the streets are beyond lonely at this time of night. On top of that, these streets are already lonely as it is. There are hardly any street lights in this specific street. So I'm on this street turning onto the next street which leads straight to the hotel. As I'm walking down this street I suddenly get spooked off guard by a car engine that was parked right next to me. The engine was so loud I'm sure it had to wake someone up. I start walking a little faster now. The car suddenly with the tires screeching and all, full throttle reverse and does a U-turn. I'm shocked at this point because I don't know what to think. I'm stoned to the bone walking home and I'm trying my best not to let my anxiety and paranoia take over me. I try my best to play it cool as if I wasn't phased by this, but what happened next is when I lost it. The person in the car with their lights on pulls down the window and yells at me, Hey, you, where are you headed? I look back and what I saw was two people wearing clown masks. One of them showed me a knife, while the other just stared at me. Once I turned around, I booked it. I heard the guy screaming, still saying stop or I'll die, but I didn't care. I ran and ran until I got to the hotel. Once I reached the hotel, the car still chased me until the parking lot. I opened the door for the hotel and as soon as I did, I heard car doors open. I quickly got inside and clicked the elevator into my unfortunate self that wasn't on the base floor, meaning it took at least 40 seconds for it to come down. I had to think quick. I was at the lobby. The lobby has a diner patio type thing where it is restricted due to COVID. I dove into that section and hid behind a plant in a tree. This is literally 10 feet away from the elevator. As I'm hiding there gathering my thoughts, I hear the hotel doors open Two pairs of footsteps can be heard loud and clear. I heard one of the guys say, He can't be far. He has to be here somewhere. The other guy responds, Hey, we should just book it. We know where he stays. We can just get him some other time. The first male voice then says, Come on, man. We needed to get one guy. That's it. Then they heard the manager talk on the microphone and the next couple of words is what relieves me. You two better leave right now. The cops are on their way. We have footage of all of this. You're too stupid. With that, both stormed out and I heard a car screeching their tires and zoom away. The manager then comes out of the front desk office area and comes to where I'm at. He asks if I'm okay, if anything happened to me, and I said no. Police did come, and the following morning they asked me questions. I'm familiar with the car. The car was a 2019 Dodge Challenger black on black with tints on all windows. The cops then told me if I'm 100% sure because this car specifically is linked to a murder about 40 minutes away. A woman was kidnapped and found dead by this train station. The witnesses claimed seeing this car right before the incident was reported. And that news shook me to the core. They told me that they would keep me updated but I got no follow-up ever since. Do I think the same thing could have happened to me on that lonely 2 a.m. night? I don't know, but I'd rather not know. And I'd like to think that I had a guardian angel that night. I work at an outdoor mall in a great neighborhood. You'd assume that it's safe as hell to be here, but then again you just can't be sure anymore. There are creepy people everywhere and I just can't help shake the feeling that this isn't my last encounter with this man. I'm 19 years old and I work at a kiosk that sells all kinds of wonky jewelry. It's usually teens, young adults and occasionally some older adults that shop with us. Every once in a while this man comes up to the kiosk, easily recognizable. Same leather jacket, crinkled corners of his eyes, one front tooth shorter than the other same slouched way of walking. He's usually harmless, but oh my good god, 
The last few times he's come by have made me so uncomfortable. I greet every customer with, Hey, can I help you find anything? And most of them say they're just looking. He always smiles at me and says, Just looking, darling. At first it was fine. I didn't care whatsoever. He seemed like a harmless 50 or so year old man. He always spent a very long time looking at the display and never bought anything. Most of the time I'm working the night shift. At the kiosk, while well, I'm surrounded by other shoppers and other kiosk workers, mine is kind of all by itself in between two empty ones in the back. The mall sales have been going downhill in the last few years and I'm usually left alone, minus the friendly security woman that stops by and chats with me on her rounds. She comes by every 30 minutes or so and she's one of the few friends I have at work. The only stores in my view are a Reebok and a Macy's. A few nights ago, I was sitting at my kiosk, bored out of my mind, and the security lady had already continued on her way. I had scrolled through Reddit already and was getting ready to open up Netflix and continue watching Terrace House, when I hear footsteps coming up. I look up to see the creepy man staring at me, but not actually at the kiosk yet. I wave at him, and he gives a little smile, but one that sends chills down my spine. A customer walks up and I immediately jump at the chance to help them, trying to shake the creepy feeling that I had. After I had checked out the customer and written down the receipt, I glanced up and see the man still staring at me. Before I could say anything, he started walking over, taking my eye contact as permission to come join me. Evening, darling, he said, doing an almost bow. Good evening, I told him. He proceeded to do as usual, checking the display, not buying anything. Instead of walking around the cart, he stayed by the register where I was, walked behind my chair to check the sides, but never went where he couldn't see me. Then he started asking questions like we were longtime friends. So, darling, do you have a boyfriend? I kind of guffawed at that because I've been single for over a year now. I told him no, I didn't have a boyfriend, but... There was a checkout girl that I found pretty damn cute in my local grocery store. I see, he said. Do you have any plans after work? He asked me. I was getting uneasy at this point, but I told him yes, I was going to a party. You gonna hook up with any boys? He asked, and my jaw dropped. Whether or not I was hooking up with any boys was in no way any of his business, but I just told him no. He smiled a little bit and said, Good. You're too pretty for them little boys anyways. He faced me again and came up to hug me. Until this point I hadn't realized my heart rate increasing and it only became apparent after I found it harder to breathe. Before he could actually do so, Linda the security guard walked up and glared at him. Sir, if you're not going to be buying anything from this young woman I suggest you go loiter somewhere else. He stiffened at the sound of Linda's voice. She's a very intimidating woman. And he left. You alright, honey? She asked me and I shrugged. He's always here. I told her. And she shook her head. Let me and Russ walk you to your car after work, okay? I nodded, relieved that she offered without me having to ask. The rest of my shift is fine. I get through it and manage to make my bosses a bit of money. At 10 o'clock on the dot, Linda and her boyfriend Russ are at my kiosk. They ask me to pack up my purse and then walk me to my little Prius. They wait for me to drive away as well. On my way to the party, I stop by a gas station to fill up the tank. As I'm waiting for it to fill, I glance over and see the man from the mall at the mini mart. He's buying a pack of cigarettes and he looks out the window and sees me. When he does, he smiles and waves holds up one finger asking me to wait a minute. I don't. I yank out the fuel hose and jump in my car, booking it out of there. I take several detours before arriving 30 minutes late to the party. I had to make sure I would lose him before showing up there. It's been a few nights since that happened and the only reason I'm writing now is because I'm actually working the morning shift and I just saw him walk out of the Macy's across from me. Linda has someone biking around this side of the mall, so he won't come near me today. But keep me in your thoughts, everyone.
So a few years ago, I, a 17-year-old female at the time, would attend community college at the outskirts of my hometown. I would take an hour and a half long bus drive because both my parents worked and my other siblings were too young to drive. The outskirts of my town, despite being the literal outskirts, are more populated than you'd expect, with strip malls and apartment buildings. The bus would drop me off about four blocks from my university, which isn't too far. I always enjoyed those few minutes I had to myself. Gave me time to dissociate, I suppose you could say. Anyway, this one time I left my phone at the library, like a true idiot. Using my brother's phone, I called a friend who worked at the school library during the late evening shift about 7 to 9, and he'd said he'd bring my phone to me. But he lived closer to the college than I did, so I told him I'd just meet him at his shift and pick it up myself. He said okay, and I boarded the bus at around 6. Now I get off the bus at my usual spot, and the place looked deserted. I'd never been there that late at night, and maybe it was because it was a weekday that people were home, or I'm not really sure. I had my brother's phone in my pocket, and I just clutched it tighter and tighter, picking up my speed until I was practically jogging. I'm nearing to a corner when a flash of light goes off to my right. There, in the shadows, is a slimy, grimy-looking man. He's balding with a tourist shirt unbuttoned halfway, showing off his chest hair. He was wearing sunglasses at night, was wearing some gold jewelry, and was probably borderline morbidly obese. Just picture the word sleazy as a person. And most importantly, he had just taken a picture of me. In the instant that I saw the flash go off, I knew it was coming from his phone. Now I think it's important to understand our positioning. He was pressed against a building to my right, right at the corner I had to turn. I was about 10 feet away from him. To my left, on the same side of the street, was a car with blacked out windows and no license plates, directly across the sidewalk from the man. The car was parked with the driver's seat facing me, so it was on the wrong side of the road because America drives on the right side as opposed to the left. I had slowed down at that point as I began to debate my next move. Cross the street and continue walking, make a break for the school turn 180 and leave my phone at the library, or approach the potentially dangerous gentleman. I did the stupidest possible thing and approached this man. I'm not going to sit here and give you street advice, but maybe don't do what I did. I'm alive, but I definitely got lucky. Anyway, I demanded to know what he was doing. He looked taken aback. I could see his brain short-circuiting because this tiny young girl was red in the face demanding to know what he was doing. He eventually sputtered about how he was just standing there. I said, No, I saw you take that picture of me. His face fell. He started saying no he hadn't done that. Why would he want a picture of me? I had imagined it. I asked to see his gallery, which is extremely risky because who knows what it could have seen. He slowly pulls up his gallery and as it's opening, I see a blurry picture of me in the distance. I didn't think I'd get that far. Granted, I had been running on adrenaline during our whole interaction, but this really made me pause. I told him to delete it. Then a door slammed shut, and I just knew that it was the parked car. My brain cleared up and I hightailed it to school. I could hear a single pair of footsteps behind me, but I sure wasn't going to turn around and check who it was. The car started, but they would have had to do a U-turn on a relatively narrow street just to be able to follow me, and I think that's what saved my life, the fact that the car was parked facing the wrong direction. I reached the school, out of breath and in tears. My friend opened the building for me and I was crying, explaining what had happened. He locked us in while we waited for the police, but the sleazy guy and his buddy were never found. Anyway, my mom had gotten out of work by that point and I called her to ask to pick me up. We waited with my friend till the end of his shift and drove him home too. Needless to say, I carry mace with me everywhere I go now and am yet to find a police report stating a guy matching his description had been arrested. To be honest, I don't think the police believed me fully, but who knows. And to this day I wonder... What would have happened if I hadn't confronted him? Would I be here to write this story out? 
or did I put myself in an unnecessarily dangerous situation by doing it? And I still wonder, what was he using those pictures for? So a couple of years back, I was living with two roommates, both women, Emily and Jenna, in a three-bedroom, three-bathroom apartment. Luxury, I know. We knew each other from work, and since we were all new to the city we were living in, we figured it would be the most convenient to just live with each other. I was the oldest in the apartment at 26, Emily was 23, and Jenna was 21, and let me tell you, there's a huge difference between 26 and 23 and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I'd essentially partied myself out at this point. Alcohol and I had entered into a relationship where a glass or two of wine or a nice bourbon was amenable, but anything more than that put me on my butt for the foreseeable future. Emily and Jenna still partied like college freshmen and a lot of their weekends were spent getting drunk, going out, and bringing guys back. No judgement here, I'm all for empowered women doing their thing. Most nights I would hang with them for the first part as they pre-gamed at the apartment and then they would go out. I'd wind down and head to bed. At 26 I was a card-carrying member of the old lady society and I wasn't ashamed at all. Some might even say that I was our chapter's president. On one particular night in January, the night played out in its typical way. They headed out to a friend's house in the bars at around 9.30 and I snuggled up with a book and fell asleep at around 11.30. Fast forward to 4am and I'm awoken by some strange noises in my room. I thought it was my hamster tater tot making noises in her cage, but I knew something was very wrong when I felt my duvet being pulled off of me. My boyfriend at the time was living in a different city and he wasn't visiting this weekend so believe me when I say that I was concerned. My eyes popped open to see a pale, skinny, completely naked man pulling my covers off of me and attempting to get into bed next to me. Have you ever had the feeling that your stomach is falling out of your butt? Because yeah, that's what I felt. In that moment I was utterly and totally convinced that this was my end. I would be murdered in my own bed by a strange man all before I was able to pay off my student loans. Sorry mom. Here's another 15000 you have to worry about because our government doesn't think death is good enough reason to forgive this. But anyways, once the initial instance of sheer terror wore off a little bit, I realized that this guy was probably a guy that Emily had brought home. Jenna was dating a guy at the time who was around fairly frequently, so I knew him, and this pale stick of a man attempting to get in bed with me was not him. Gathering all of my courage and metaphorically picking my stomach out of my butt, I tapped him on the arm. I was very careful not to let my eyes or hand drift any lower because hey, I didn't want him getting any ideas while he was intruding into my most sacred space in the apartment. And I just said, no, 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 stop, stop. He looked at me with those eyes that just tell you that someone is drunk out of their minds. You know, lights on, nobody home kind of deal, and cocked his head to one side like a confused puppy. Who are you here with? I said a little more forcefully. Emily? He replied, swaying a little. Yeah, no, this isn't her room. I'm not Emily, she's across the living room. He looked at me for another second and then with slurred speech but in a tone that told me he was deeply embarrassed said, Oh, oh I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go. He turned on his heels and walked out of my room closing the door very gently as he did and his pale butt practically glowing in the moonlight streaming from my window. I bolted out of bed and locked the door behind him. I didn't need any more surprises that night. I crawled back into bed, heart pounding and spent the next 30 minutes doing the deep breathing exercises my counselor taught me to calm myself down enough to fall back asleep. What I think happened is that he got up to pee in the middle of the night and didn't remember where Emily's room was and just so happened to walk into mine mistakenly. It's honestly a weird mistake since Emily's bathroom and her bedroom are literally right next to each other, but since this guy had never been in the apartment before and he was drunker than a frat boy named Chet, I guess he got confused. In any case, he slipped out of the apartment before I got up that morning, 
thank God, and when I told Emily what had happened, she practically broke down she was so upset. I still lock my bedroom door to this day, even though I'm living with my boyfriend who keeps a baseball bat next to his bed just in case we have intruders. I'm glad it was a mistake, and I'm glad I wasn't harmed, but my god, it was the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. Let me preface the story with a little background information. I am a college student majoring in engineering. I am currently away from school on a co-op rotation with a major company. My company is headquartered in a larger city and I am working at a smaller site just north of HQ. I live in a small township in the suburbs, a gated apartment complex, and a very nice area with very low crime rates. I regularly go on jogs with my music on full blast and my dog at my side. We walk around at night. It's by all accounts a very safe place to live and I felt very safe here. Until today. I woke up and got ready for work like normal. When I got into my car not only was it basically frozen over but I noticed that I was low on gas. I decided not to risk it and fill up before work. Once my front and back windows defrosted just enough for me to see, I drove a block down the road to my usual fill up spot. It has lots of pumps and usually isn't packed and it's super close to my apartment. They also usually have lower prices than other gas stations in the area. I pulled into the parking lot and there isn't another car anywhere save for a semi-truck parked by the doors and employee cars around the side. All the pumps are open. I pull up to the farthest right pump and hop out. As I'm swiping my card and doing all that stuff, another car pulls up. I didn't get a great look at it honestly, but it wasn't shiny or new. I barely paid any attention until the car stopped at the pump on the other side of my own. You know how pumps are double-sided. Of all the open pumps, this driver chose the one connected to the one I was currently using. Not exactly perfect pandemic manners, I suppose. Still, I didn't think much of it, at least not initially. I could hear the other drivers swiping their card and entering their PIN number. I was freezing cold and just trying to hurry. I turned around and put the nozzle in the car and I stood there for a minute. Foolishly, I decided to keep my back turned. I didn't want to have any contact with that person, so I tried to pretend nobody was there. Once I filled up, I removed the nozzle and turned around, still keeping myself and not lifting my eyes. I finished the transaction and got my receipt. While it was printing, I looked up casually. I almost felt flat on the pavement when I saw a man peering around the corner of the pump, staring at me. You know how people sometimes describe creepy people as having an inhuman quality? I never really understood that until today. The way this man looked at me sent a shiver down my spine. His eyes were cold and unyielding. He was not blinking or moving, but his gaze was growing ever more intense. There was something animalistic in the way he stared at me. I felt like a deer being watched by a mountain lion. The hairs on the back of my neck. My instincts screamed at me to run. And this all took place in the span of just a couple of seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. I quickly opened my car door. When I did, he moved his head, tilting it to the side to peer into my car. I didn't consider it at the time, but he might have been looking to see if I was alone. I intentionally blocked my view of the inside of my car with my body and closed the door quickly and I locked it immediately. I mentioned earlier that my car was nearly frozen, but by now, the front back windows were entirely clear. The side windows, however, were almost still all icy. There was a single strip of clarity in the driver's side window, a result of me rolling the window down a few moments prior in an attempt to clear it off. As I hastily buckled my seatbelt, I ventured a glance to my left. Immediately startled, I let out a sudden breath, but was almost paralyzed with fear after. The man was not only still there, but he had an inch closer, so close that he was directly next to my car slightly bent over like he was peering in. All I could do was stare. He was tall, with dark hair and a well-built frame. He was certainly much larger than me. He seemed a few years older than me as well, and had it not been for those eyes I might have said that he was attractive, 
but those eyes were haunting, especially as they gazed at me through my window. He started to mouth words that I couldn't hear through the window and it snapped me out of my haze and I immediately locked all my doors. I decided immediately the logical thing to do was to get myself out of there as fast as possible and I bolted in my car. I didn't want to give him the chance to be able to follow me and though my work has great security, I didn't want him knowing where I worked and I don't know if this man was just a creep, needed something or something much darker but I don't ever want to find out, ever. This happened to me when I was around 8 or 9 years old in the Philippines and to this day it still haunts me. Every year, my family and I would always go on vacation in our province and we always celebrate Christmas and New Year's there. Our house is somewhere on the mountain so trees and other nature stuff are expected to be seen. One night, me and my mother were arguing about something, I can't remember what it was, and it was around 11pm to 12am midnight. I was so mad that I decided to run away in tears and I was not paying attention to where I was headed. I stopped on a tree to take away my anger and to calm myself. After some time, I decided to go back. When I looked around, that's when I knew that I was lost in the forest. I can't remember how much time had passed, but I was still pretty calm until I heard a sound from behind. It sounds like the ground being shoveled by someone. I look behind me to see nothing. At this point, my heart is still racing. I can feel the adrenaline flowing over me. I was stupid back then, so I called out, Is anyone there? The sound suddenly stopped. I thought to myself that I was imagining things, so I started to walk again. I then heard the sound again, but this time I heard footsteps and was sure that I heard it well. When I turned around and saw a shadowy figure behind the tree, and that's when my fight or flight started kicking in. I was so terrified that I froze there, watching. Very bad idea. It felt like an eternity standing there in silence when... The figure moved, I started running for my life and shouting for help. Just like any other horror movie, I fell to the ground. The sounds started to get louder and louder that it actually hurt my ears. It was a scream from a person. I stand up quickly and run as fast as possible. Fortunately, I found the way back to the house, crying and terrified. When I got home, I told them everything that had happened to me and they didn't believe me at first until one of our neighbors a while later rushed into our home to inform us that a dead body was actually found in the forest. A farmer found it when he was about to go home. He immediately called the police and they inspected it. The very next day they continued to investigate the area. They found the dead body in various pieces. It was never identified since the killer removed the teeth and various other things. After we found out what happened, we left the place as soon as possible. Since then, we never heard from him and I don't know if they found the killer or not. Despite the incident, the place was never a good place to stay after that. Just a bad vibe, so we never returned back to our old home. My parents were so happy that I managed to escape that. I apologized to my mother and vice versa. Thankfully, we're living happily now and we stopped talking about it and just allow the past to remain there. It happened back in 2004 when I was 12 years old. It was autumn, the beginning of the school year, but the weather was still uncharacteristically warm and the dark nights of northern Europe had not kicked in yet. I was playing outside with my best friend Kirsten, we were sitting and talking on the large rock in front of my apartment complex right under my window. I don't remember how long we'd been there until we see a man that we had not seen before walk towards us. I say man, but he had that baby face going on where he could have been anywhere from 18 to 35. At first we didn't pay him any attention, but as he reached us, he came and sat down right next to me, put his arm around me and said, Sarah, finally... Where have you been? 
I've been looking all over for you. At this point, Kirsten laughs, thinking it's a boyfriend of mine that I didn't tell her about. Except, obviously it isn't. I'd never seen this man in my life. Yes, we lived in a small town, but it wasn't small enough for you to know everybody there, and I was definitely not popular enough for strangers to know my name. Now, a lot of weird things happen often in my hometown, from gunfights to explosions. Kirsten and I made friends with a criminal convicted of chopping two people to pieces, and we had been chased with an axe by this weird alcoholic guy who lived in the forest, so we knew that some people can be extremely dangerous, and if your instincts tell you that something is wrong, you better listen to it. Except in this case, my instincts never kicked in. I didn't see this man as a threat, at all. Thinking to myself that perhaps it's someone I met over the summer and made friends with, trying really hard to remember his name, I just turned to him and say, Hey, how's your summer been? Praying that he'll say something that'll jog my memory in regards to him. His face lights up and he just starts talking about random things. When I can't remember him no matter how hard I try, I just say, Sorry, but we really have to go now. It's getting late and tomorrow's a school day. I say this while mentally preparing myself that he might not like it, but he just smiles and says, Oh, alright. I'll see you around then. I basically drag Kirsten by the arm into my place and all the while she's still laughing and asking me why I never introduced her to my boyfriend. I shush her and tell her, enunciating every word, that I had never seen this man in my entire life. Kirsten looks at me for a bit then goes silent and just says, Huh. That's really weird. I've never seen him either. The next day our geography class took place outside. We had to use a compass or something. I no longer remember the details of the class. Not even ten minutes into the lesson, one of the boys in my class walks up to me to tell me there's a man asking for me. For a second I'm confused. The events of yesterday are already forgotten, but as soon as I turn around I see the man from yesterday standing among my classmates looking at me and Everything that happened the day before comes flooding back to me. Now all my classmates are naturally making fun of me, asking me to introduce me to my hot boyfriend to them. Even the teacher says jokingly that I will have to tell my boyfriend to wait until classes are over. At this point I'm really tired, so I just walk up to him and tell him that I'm in class right now and he really shouldn't be on school grounds if he's not a student. He immediately tells me that he's got a car nearby and that he can drive me home. I tell him that I'm planning on walking home as the weather is nice, but he's welcome to walk with my friends and I. And sure enough, after my classes end, he's right there, waiting for me. Normally I walk home with a group of four friends, so with an addition of this weird man, we can't all walk next to each other. He walks ahead of us, occasionally looking back and asking about my school day, about my grades, completely harmless questions, no weird compliments. No weird anything except for the fact that I still don't know who this man is. Same evening my phone rings, a call from an unknown number. I answer and I hear a familiar voice go, Hey, did you get home alright? I ask if one of my friends gave him my number and this time he sounds almost hurt when he says, No, you gave it to me. How can you not remember? Again, we talk for a little bit, mostly about my grades and school. I'm going to drag the story out too much, but this man called me every single day, followed me to school. In school, he sometimes came into the building and found me in the school corridor just to sit and talk to me. Walked home with us after school. He found me when I was out with friends. He always knew when my extracurriculars would end. He was always there. Everywhere. Every single day. Until one day in November I left my house to go to school looking around and I couldn't see him. The whole day passed and he was nowhere to be found. As weird as it sounds, I was concerned, thinking whether something had happened to him, and I never did find out. As I said, it's been over 16 years now and I never saw that man and everyone I spoke to about it vowed that they didn't know him either. By the way, I did tell family, they just told me not to encourage him and that I should ignore him. I suppose 16 years ago was a very different time.
I lived quite a distance off the road in an unremarkable house on private property. My neighbors are all older family members who go to bed extremely early and whose children are already grown and out of the house. In summary, there are no mischief makers to play pranks on us here. A few months ago, my mother and I stayed up late one evening watching television together. Around 3 a.m., I turned the television off and decided to go to bed. As I was leaving the room, I began to hear what sounded like carnival music playing outside of my house in the front yard. It was loud and close. My mother heard it too and immediately went to the window to investigate. She couldn't see anything but darkness. Everyone else was either asleep for the night or away on vacation. The lights were off in their houses and none of them would be caught dead listening to anything but country music. We were miles from the nearest city so it wasn't the product of noise pollution. You can hear when a car is pulled up in the yard but there was no sound of a car. The silence where we live is usually deafening. All you can hear is the ringing in your ears. Where did this song come from? Who was playing it and why? I was very unsettled by the idea of a stranger in our yard playing carnival music as such suggests malicious intent. My father and uncle later mentioned that 20 years ago when my parents first moved in, the electrician had come to install a ceiling light and stopped in the middle of his work, saying he could hear Pink Floyd playing in the front yard. Neither my father nor uncle could hear it. My father is a bit hard of hearing, my uncle is much older, so they laughed it off and thought the man was nuts. But the electrician was freaked out. He kept opening the door and trying to find the source of the noise to no avail. Then it hit me. The song I had heard that night was Pink Floyd's Cirrus Minor, the part that sounds like carnival music. I played the song for my mother and she began freaking out saying, Yes, yes, that's what I heard. Who sits in my yard at night at 3 a.m. in the middle of nowhere playing the same song, which isn't even a popular song, 20 years later with no car? Where did they come from? They would have had to have walked several miles to get here. Aside from this, the only other strange thing we experience that would suggest an intruder is that we feel and hear knocking on the living room window late at night around the same hour, sometimes so intense that the entire wall of the house is rattled and it sends the couch against it into a reclining position. There are no nearby trees that tap the glass, and no animals except a human could possibly reach it. Fortunately, this has stopped over the last few weeks. A few years ago on Cora, I answered the question, have you ever met someone for the first time and got the strangest feeling that the person was bad? Reading through this subreddit had me thinking back to that question, so I figured I'd share my story. Years back, I made a late night stop at a local Walmart on my way home from a friend's house. It was a quiet area, not a lot of people out and about at nearly 1am. I lived around there for years and never run into any truly criminal elements there, so I felt safe going to the store alone as a woman in my early 20s. I made eye contact with a teenage girl the second I walked in the door. She was parked on a bench by the restrooms, hugging a backpack and small purse, checking her phone with a rather desperate expression on her face. When she looked at me, I could tell that she was on the verge of panicking. After a brief second of staring at me, she went back to checking her phone and making phone calls. At the other end of the bench was a white-haired man in jeans and a t-shirt. If I had to guess, he was probably in his late 50s or early 60s. Altogether, nothing appeared off about him. But what struck me was the fact that he never looked up as I passed. Instead, his eyes were absolutely glued to the teenage girl next to him. Not in a passive way, but like he was sizing her up for something. She was perched on the edge of the bench, angling herself away from his gaze and leaning away from him. Her body language screamed that she wanted nothing to do with him. Something about him set off warning bells in my head and I went about grabbing the items I had stopped for. I'm normally the type of person that mills about stores aimlessly, making a point to wander each aisle just to see what's for sale. That night, however, I felt a pressing need to get in and out of the store as quickly as possible. Something in the back of my head told me to keep an eye on the man on the front bench. 
I moved my knife from my purse to the front pocket of my jeans where it would be easily accessible. That's how uneasy I felt being in the same building as this man. As I purchased my items, I watched the pair on the front bench. The man had moved halfway across the space between them and was trying to chat with the young woman. She was shaking her head and offering one-word answers, looking like a rabbit about to bolt. As I walked past them again to leave with my purchases, she stopped me and asked if I was headed anywhere close to my old hometown. Apparently, she'd been on her way home from a trip with friends and they had made a stop to grab drinks and use the restroom. She'd gotten separated from the group and they left her at the store. The store was about a 30-minute drive from my old hometown and I knew that to get home, she'd have to walk several hours along unlit stretches of rural highway. The man sitting next to her continued to leer at her but refused to look my way. While I would normally have told the girl that I was headed the opposite direction, something in the back of my head told me not to leave her alone with this man. I agreed to take her home, and she thanked me profusely and offered gas money and a cigarette. I refused both and took her home, the logical part of my brain reasoning that the girl weighed maybe a hundred pounds max and was a full head shorter than I was, so if it came down to it, I could fight her off. I wasn't stupid either. I texted a few friends to let them know what I was doing and they were not happy with me. The girl mentioned her address and I knew exactly where she was talking about. It was an old quiet neighborhood where I used to play little league baseball down the street and swim in the pool a few blocks away. During the drive she told me that she just moved to the area with her mom and younger sisters from a larger city several hours south. She'd taken off with a few of her old friends for the weekend and her mom hadn't expected her back until the following day, so she'd silenced her phone for the night and hadn't picked up when the girl tried to call. I vaguely remember something about her mom having to work early in the morning and none of the girl's sisters were old enough to have their own phones. We arrived at our destination and the girl gave me a handshake and thanked me repeatedly, asking if there was anything she could do to repay me. I told her, yeah, do me a favor get better friends. Looking back, I have no idea what about that man creeped me out so much, but something about him and the way he was staring at that girl got my hackles up. I had thought in passing that he might have been waiting for someone else in the store, perhaps someone using the nearby restroom, but upon checking it out, it struck me that I hadn't seen any other customers there, so he really had no reason to be waiting on that bench like that, almost stalking her. I was still living with my parents at the time, so when I got home I woke my mom up and told her what happened. She hesitated, and I could see that she didn't like the idea of me giving a stranger a ride home. But in the end, she agreed that something had prompted me to take action, and that I might have saved that young girl from being harassed, or worse. So this literally just happened this week. I'm a 25-year-old female and a single mom. We had a guy quit earlier this week and we thought he skipped town. This guy always gave me the creeps. He was at least 59 to 63, I'd say. For a bit more backstory, I'm open about being a true crime fan. I listen to true crime podcasts regularly at work. Well, one day he told me to look up a more current missing woman's case. She was... A mom, brown hair and brown eyes like me, and she went missing right before he moved to my town. I hope I'm overthinking this, but last night my mom took my son for the night and this guy knew that I was alone on Thursday nights due to small talk in the office. As I was closing my curtains due to it getting dark and you can see clearly into my house, I saw his van down the street. I locked the doors and had my gun with me in my chair watching TV. Now, this is a small town that I live in, so my friends and family will stop over randomly, but they never knock. So when I heard a knock on the door, I loaded my gun, looked out the window for a vehicle, but there was nothing. Whiskey, my Yorkie, started growling, which he never growls. Barks like a little dog, but I never hear him growl. Something just wasn't right. Even though my ex-husband taught me all sorts of self-defense, I called the police and with snow on the ground there were footprints going along all around my house. He left a gate open and I hadn't heard from the police if they found him yet. 
I lock my doors more often now and have friends and family call before they come over. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio down below. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.